بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ویلکم بیک ٹو دا پی ایل تھری ہنڈریڈ ایگزام پریپریشن سیریز ویئر وی آر ایکسپلورنگ دا فرسٹ لرننگ پیتھ پریپیئر دا ڈیٹا وی آر ٹاکنگ اباؤٹ دا سیکنڈ ٹاپک آف دا سیکشن گیٹ ڈیٹا فرام ڈیٹا سورسز اینڈ دا سیکنڈ ٹاپک از چینج ڈیٹا سورس سیٹنگس انکلوڈنگ کریڈینشیلس پرائیویسی لیولس اینڈ ڈیٹا سورس لوکیشنس ان دا پریویس ویڈیو وی ہیو ٹاکڈ اباؤٹ دا ڈیٹا سورس سیٹنگس اینڈ دا ڈیٹا سورس لوکیشنس اینڈ ان دس ویڈیو وی آر گوئنگ ٹو ٹاک اباؤٹ دا کریڈینشیلس اینڈ دا پرائیویسی لیولس اسوسیٹیڈ ود دا ڈیٹا سورسز ان دا پریویس ویڈیو وی ٹاکڈ اباؤٹ دا ڈیٹا سورس سیٹنگس اینڈ سم آف دا سیٹنگس انکلوڈ دا پرائیویسی لیول سیٹنگس اینڈ آلسو دا کریڈینشیلس اسوسیٹیڈ ود دا ڈیٹا سورس فار ایوری ڈیٹا سورس دیر آر ملٹیپل آپشنس فار پاسنگ دا کریڈینشیلس اور ان ادر ورڈس ڈفرینٹ اوتھینٹیکیشن میتھڈس دیٹ کین بی یوزڈ سو لیٹس ہیو اے لک ایٹ سم آف دیز اوتھینٹیکیشن میتھڈس سو دا فرسٹ ون از دا انونیمس دا انونیمس مینس دیٹ یو ڈو ناٹ ریکوائر اینی کریڈینشیلس ٹو کنیکٹ ٹو دس پرٹیکولر ڈیٹا سورس دین دیر از این ادر کریڈینشیل میتھڈ وچ از بیسک دس ریکوائرز یو ٹو گیو اے یوزر نیم اینڈ اے پاس ورڈ before you are given permission to connect to that particular data source. Next one, which we actually use once we connect to the databases, and this is also referred to as the database authentication method, which, which is similar to the basic one, where you give a username and a password. Then the next one is called the Windows authentication method. So wherever you find the Windows authentication method, you are going to pass the same credentials as you use to log into the windows environment on your desktop machine next is the microsoft account so if you are connecting to some source on the microsoft azure cloud then you are going to use the credentials for the microsoft azure account for connecting to any of the resources hosted on the microsoft azure account Next authentication method is organizational account similar to what we are using in case of SharePoint. So here the Microsoft 365 account credentials are used to connect to the Microsoft 365 resources like SharePoint. Another authentication method is the API key which is used to connect to a REST API from the Power Query environment. So if you are connecting to a REST API then One of the methods is to pass on the API key which is, uh, which if, which, uh, is available and you can use that API key to connect to the REST API. Another authentication method is the auth2 which is similar to the one that we talked about uh, just, uh, just now which is the API key. So once we are connected to REST, connecting to REST APIs from Power Query inside the Power BI environment through custom connectors then this authentication method is used for the data source all of these authentication methods are available for different data sources inside the power query environment and you should be familiar with all of these authentication methods for the different data sources and some of the questions on the pl300 exam can talk about some of the authentication methods associated with the data sources in case you are trying to connect to a data source and a connector is not available for that particular data source in power query then custom connector can be created using the software development kit or sdk for power query now let's go to power query editor and see where we can specify the authentication methods we have already seen it once we were connected to different data sources but let's have a look inside the data source settings option as well here i am inside the power query editor and i have opened the file that we used to connect to the sql server database in one of the previous videos now i am going to go and click on the data source settings and here i am going to see the data source which in our case is the adventure works dw 2019 database so if i click on one of the options shown here which is the edit permissions so if i click on edit permissions here i am going to see that i get to see the option which says credential so if i just go and click on the edit option here so here i am going to see the credentials that i can pass to connect to this particular data source and remember because we have the adventure works dw 2019 
database inside SQL Server which is installed on our local machine. So that is why I am using the uh, Windows based credentials. But if there is uh, another database where you have the credentials associated with the database itself, then you can go and click on the database credentials. And similarly, if a Microsoft account is used to host the SQL Server database, then the Microsoft account credentials can be used. So in this way, you can go and uh, change the credentials for any data source if there are credentials associated with that particular data source. Below this credentials area, there is another setting that you should know and that is the next topic that we are going to discuss and that is related to the privacy level. So any, every data source has a privacy level associated with it and if I click on this option, here I see four options. The first one is none then public, then organizational, and the fourth one and the last one is the private privacy level. Now let's go to the slide deck and first see what are these privacy levels and why are these required for the data sources. Privacy levels specify an isolation level that defines the degree that one data source will be isolated from other data sources. So once we have multiple data sources inside of Power Query Editor, then we need to combine the queries coming from different data sources. So once we try to combine the different data sources or the queries from different data sources, then there has to be an isolation level that should define the degree that one data source should be isolated from other data sources. So that is why we need to specify these privacy levels. In order to have this functionality working, there must be at least two queries from different data sources. So this setting is useful when we are combining different queries. So we need to at least have two queries and those queries should be from different data sources. The functionality only works when we try to do either a merge operation or an append operation. So we are going to talk about the merge and append operations in other videos, but these are the two operations which are used to combine tables or queries inside of Power Query Editor. When we use these operations to combine the data, these operations can expose data from one data source to another data source. At the time of combining, Power Query works behind the scenes based on the privacy settings on these data sources. So we can specify either of the four settings that we saw, none, private, organizational or public and Power Query works behind the scenes based on the setting for the data source and the setting can have an impact on the performance. So this process is controlled by a data privacy firewall whose job is to prevent Power Query from unintentionally leaking data between the data sources. So we do not want that once we are combining data between different data sources, then the process of combining the data should not lead to an unintentional leakage of data between data sources. Now let's have a look at the privacy settings. So the first setting is the private and for private it says that the data sources set to private contain sensitive or confidential information visibility can be restricted to authorized users. Private data sources are completely isolated from other data sources, including other privacy private data sources. So if we have a data source set to private, then it is completely isolated from the other data sources. Examples include Facebook data, a textbook, a text file containing stock awards or a workbook containing employee review information. So any data which can be deemed as sensitive or having confidential information is normally set to private. The second privacy setting is organizational. Organizational data sources are isolated from all public data sources but are visible to other private and organizational data sources. Visibility for these is set to a trusted group. Examples include a Microsoft Word document on an intranet SharePoint site with permissions enabled for a trusted group. So if the data source is set to organizational, then it is isolated from the public data sources, but it is visible to 
private and other organizational data sources. The third setting is the public setting. Public data sources are not isolated at all. Files, internet data sources and workbook data can be set to public. Data can fold into other data sources and visibility is available to everyone. Examples include free data from the Azure marketplace, data from a Wikipedia page or a local file containing data copied, copied from a public web page. So data sources set to the public privacy level are normally data sources which contain data that is publicly available and there is no concern of data privacy associated with any of the data sources. So based on the setting for each of these data sources, when Power Query is combining data from different data sources, it follows different processes and protocols to combine the data so that the privacy level of the data source is not violated. There is a setting in Power BI desktop where you can specify how do you want the privacy levels for files to work. And this setting has normally two options. The first option, which is the default option, is the combined data according to the privacy level setting for each source. So this is the default setting which allows Power Query to combine the data according to the privacy level settings. Merging data across the privacy isolation zones will result in some sort of data buffering. The other setting is to ignore the privacy levels and potentially, potentially improve the performance. In this setting, data is combined, ignoring the privacy level setting. So ignoring the privacy setting can reveal sensitive or confidential information to an unauthorized user, but this setting might improve the performance and functionality. So based on whatever setting you choose, there is a trade-off between performance if you want to keep the privacy level, level settings, then there, must, there, there could be some kind of data buffering once the data is being combined. But if the privacy levels are ignored, then there is marked improvement in the performance. But then there is always this risk of confidential data being exposed to the unauthorized users. Now, let's go to the Power Query window and see how we can set the privacy levels and also have a look at the privacy level setting in Power BI desktop. I am inside the Power Query editor and I am going to go and click on the data source setting again. And here I am going to again go into the edit permissions. And here you can clearly see that these are the privacy levels associated. So here I can select any of the privacy levels that I want for this particular adventure works database inside the SQL server instance. Similarly, I can choose the privacy level uh, setting for the other data sources. There is another option here which says clear permission. So any, the, any of the permissions related to the credentials or the privacy level, if I want to just clear those permissions, I can just click here and it throws me uh, a warning that are you sure to clear the permissions if you clear it will have no way of getting it back so it says that if you want to clear the permissions then you can go ahead and click on delete and the settings would be cleared now i am inside the Power BI desktop environment and now i want to go and see the area where i can set the settings for the privacy level that what setting should power bi use so i'm going to go and click on options and settings and then i'm going to click on options and this is going to open up the window where we can do the settings for various areas inside our Power BI file. So if you go and come to the current file area, there is, an, there is a setting which says privacy levels. So this is the setting where I can set that combining the data should be according to the privacy level settings or should I ignore the privacy levels and potentially improve the performance. So it is important that you should keep this as combine the data according to the privacy level settings because you do not want the private data sources to be exposed to the organizational or other data sources. Lastly, inside the data source settings, there is another option which says export PBIDS. So PBIDS stands for Power BI Data Source File. So there is a 
file which has the extension .pbids. If I click on this option here, it opens up a window and it's asking me to give a name where my desktop file will be saved as a data source file. Let's see what these data source files are all about. PBIDS files are Power BI desktop files that have a specific structure and a .pbids extension to identify them as Power BI data source files. These files streamline the get data experience for new or beginner report creators in the organization. When an author opens a PBIDS file, the Power BI desktop prompts the user for credentials to authenticate and connect to the data source that the file specifies. So this is a special type of a file similar to the Power BI desktop file with the additional feature that every time once you open the file, it asks you or the user to give the credentials for authentication and connect to the data source. So in case you share your Power BI file with another user, then the user does not have to worry about passing the right credentials. So this is just an extension or just another variant of the Power BI desktop file that allows you to give your own credentials at the time of opening the file. The only limitation with these files is that it just supports a single data source. So you cannot have more than a single data source in a PBIDS files specifying more than one data source results in an error. So in this video, we have had a look at the Power BI data source credentials. Then we had a look at the privacy levels associated with the data source and what are the options that we can use to set these privacy levels. And lastly, we also had a brief look at what are the Power BI data source files. So this is a very important topic from exam point of view. Normally it comes as a part of a question and it is normally combined with connecting the data sources. So make sure that you are, available, uh, you are aware of all the things that we covered in this video. So that's all for this video and I'll see you in the next one.